Um, thank you. Great job. Um, hi, my name is Brian Sleese, and um, as we just heard, I'm a recent graduate at UC Irvine. Um, I had two um, bachelor's degrees, one in political science and one in sociology. Um, I now work at the St. Anna Zoo. I'm one of our membership managers, and I'm a lifelong volunteer at the American Red Cross. To start us off today, I'm going to ask for some audience participation. Who's down? Yeah? Okay, <laughs> great. Go ahead, I'm liking this. So, raise your hand if you remember being in kindergarten. A few hands. <laughs> Raise your hand if you remember your first day of kindergarten. A few again. Um, raise your hand if you remember your kindergarten teacher's name. Or first preschool, first grade. Raise your hand if you remember an adult in your life when you were growing up who made a difference in your life. Okay. Those of you who raise your hand, just audibly speak their names at this time. What is the name of the person who made a difference in your life? Audience participation. Dead. Okay, we're getting a few. Great. So, I do that for two reasons. One, I know it's a Saturday night. We're going to get you pumping a little bit, right? And two, because kindergarten and adults in my life have made the most important difference in my life. Um, when I was growing up, I started kindergarten, and I had Mrs. Smith here. She was one of my two teachers. My second teacher was Mrs. Karen Cronin. And kindergarten was the greatest time. Life. Who remembers those days? Naps, juice boxes, coloring, cutting, and pasting. I can tell you that much. It was the best time for me um, because of those experiences, but also because of my first day of school. My first day of school was a day of many firsts. First day of school. First day in a learning environment. It was my first time away from my family. My freak flag could fly. Freak flag could fly. And it was also a day where I had my first opportunity to help somebody. On the first day of kindergarten, I walked in, and there was young, one young man named Aaron. And Aaron was sitting across the room, and I just saw him crying. And I said, Aaron, what's up? My sister has told me kindergarten is the best day and the best year of your life. Why are you crying? And Aaron said, I miss my family, and I miss my mom. And I said, no more of that. This is kindergarten. This is amazing. We're going to have a great time. We are going to go color, we're going to go play on the jungle gym, and we're going to have friendship together. So we, we became friends, and we became friends with one other person named Maria. Now I tell you this story not because I'm obsessed with myself, although I am. Um, I tell you this story because that was the first time that I was able to help somebody outside of my family. That was a time when, although I didn't know it, I went home that night and I told my mom, I want to be a teacher. had no idea what that meant, but I want to be a teacher and I want to help people. So uh, family is very important to me. Um, this is my first birthday party. As you can tell by the jewel, I love cake and I love Winnie the Pooh. Um, and my family taught me at a young age that helping others is what makes us special and helping others is what makes our life complete. Um, and I didn't quite fully understand that. Um, growing up through elementary school, um, I saw a lot of that. I had, as I mentioned earlier, Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Cronin kindergarten. First grade, Mrs. Barma. Second grade, Mrs. Davis. Third grade, Mr. Merrill. Fourth grade, Ms. Henriksen. Fifth grade, Mrs. Norton. And I'm not going to tell you about middle school teachers, because that's when you get a lot, and there are way too many. But going into middle school and being in eighth grade, I was part of a class called Peer Assistance Leadership. And this class was all about being young leaders on our campus. We planned Red Ribbon Week. We taught about how drug use is life abuse. We were peer mediators on campus. And we found opportunities for community service outside of the classroom. And the teacher who stood out to me the most here was Ms. Susan Whitmire. And Ms. Whitmire challenged us to become leaders by volunteering. And our first event that I ever did was the Chalk Walk. For many of you that don't know, Chalk stands for Children's Hospital of Orange County. Um, in my family, Chalk is very important. This is me when I was born. Um, but when I was born, when my older sister was born and my other sister was born, um, we all basically lived at Chalk. We had opportunities where we were there for a number of days, a number of weeks. Uh, my sister was born in an incubator because she was born prematurely and we didn't think that she could make it um, a few weeks past her birth. So Chalk was important to my family um, and going to the Chalk Walk that first day um, oh, not first day, but in eighth grade, was amazing for us because 
Uh, my mom and I got to fundraise over a hundred dollars each, and we said we are giving back. We got to spend the morning in the Disneyland Resort, walking around with other fundraisers. And we said, "Wow, we're making a difference today. We are finding opportunities where we can share what we had, and families like our own are able to help survive um, and, and stay alive because of the work with Chalk and the facilities that they did." So I said. Wow, I've got a bug and this bug is biting. I want to volunteer, I want to do more, I want to help. And I knew that I loved this. I didn't know how I knew I loved this. And I'm sure you're probably wondering, you're 13 years old, how do you actually know that you love something? Well, I'll tell you I knew that I loved it because I knew what I did not love. I played soccer for 10 years and it was horrible. Who here plays soccer? No one. Oh, okay, we got a few. <laughs> Who plays sports? Who's into sports? Awesome. I'm not a sport person. As you can tell, I like everything clean and no sweat and no dirt and no grossness, no grass stains on my, on my uniform. But I was the best runner. Um, I ran away from the ball as much as I could. Um, but I knew that I did not love it. I played soccer for 10 years. When I was 15, I encouraged my parents, please let me stop. I want to start volunteering. I want to give back. Um, and they let me. And that was the best time of my life because it was a moment where I was done and I said, I'm so done with soccer. But I found the positive piece of this and I found the American Red Cross and I found an opportunity to give back. Um, more so than that one shock event, I said, what can I do to start going to community service events, to be a part of a brand, part of an organization that means so much more to people across the world, right? Our motto, down the street, across the country, around the world. We are there, we are the first responders that you see at any natural disaster. And it was amazing to be a part of this organization. And so, one of the most impactful events that I had was at um, the Honda Center here. And I promise, when I took this photo, filters were in. I'll tell you that much, kids. <laughs> filters were in, and the guy who took this photo said, I'm gonna get you an artsy photo. I looked back and I said, this is not a great photo. But, times change, am I right? Um, and Typhoon Haiyan was a typhoon that happened in the Philippines. And we were doing a fundraiser at the Honda Center. And this was at 5 a.m. we began. And so my little 14-year-old self um, had to wake up at 4 in the morning to get to this event. But we found opportunities where people were driving in and they were donating. They were bringing in $20, they were bringing $100. Kids were bringing in their piggy banks. And I said, wow. We are not just helping our neighbors, we are helping people across the country who need our help. And it was amazing. Now needless to say, this got that bug biting again. And I said, it's time to start doing more stuff with Red Cross. Time to start planning blood drives, time to start recruiting blood donors. It's time for me to start donating my blood myself. That's a blood donor. Where is that honor, right? Um, and this was amazing because I found that it wasn't just about me going home, doing my homework, going to school, coming home. It was being a part of something larger than myself. I then started taking on leadership opportunities with um, our summer leadership camp, and I made friendships and um, connections that are gonna last me a lifetime. And I know it's cliche for us to say that this was life-changing, but this was a life-changing moment um, in my life. And these are people who I've known for many years, and I plan to know many more years to come. The adults in these, Situations were the Lorraine Gerards, the Madeline Spiegelbergs, the Nargis Akabis. And these people are what gave a piece of their soul and their imagination to make sure that I was a great young leader. I also started volunteering with the Santa Ana Zoo. And this was the best time ever. We had special events where young children came to our zoo and they walked around the zoo. They learned about animals, they learned about conservation, and they learned about so much more than they learned in their classroom. And this was an amazing opportunity because I got to hang out with our Sazu mascot, our monkey mascot Sazu, right? Um, as college, as high school started to wrap up, I realized a lot of these volunteer opportunities and a lot of these um, events were all about me. And it was my growth and it was my development. Um, and I said, there has to be something more. There's got to be one next step. So as I transitioned into high school, um, and as I mentioned, I just graduated from UC Irvine and I loved it. Zot on, if any of you are anteater alumni or hopefuls, um, zot hard. My goal with going to UCI was to pick up that next piece and pass it on. 
I had an opportunity where, um, I called it a growth opportunity. A growth opportunity where I had a not so great experience at one of our summer leadership camps. And I said, I don't like this. I was ready to quit. I was ready to say, volunteering is a thankless job. Volunteering is something that you don't get a gift, you don't get a paycheck for. Why am I doing this? And I thought back to all those days of volunteering, and you saw all those photos, and I thought back to a quote, be the change you wish to see in this world. And I said, now's the time. So my friends and I started a nonprofit. We started our own summer leadership camp. And this was based on our principles, based on our values, based on our vision. And this was our chance to take everything that we've learned and pass that on to the next generation. Our camp was called Generation. And this was our first um, camp, camp counselor staff along with our adult staff in the background. And this was, this was my moment. This was my time and this was my opportunity to become something more than myself and share that with others. I also started working at the Santa Ana Zoo. Um, as I shared earlier, um, I am one of our membership managers, so I run our front entrance and I run our membership program. Um, and I get to teach young people about um, conservation, about animals, and about endangered species. And that is one of my other um, true passions and something that I'm able to help share and educate others. Um, adults at the zoo that have impacted me, um, Kathy Decker, Colby Kane. I am also now on our National Youth Council for the Air. Cross. This is a team of 13 individuals, um, this was from our most recent in-person meeting, who work collaboratively um, and remotely to ensure that youth volunteers become a priority in our organization and that the work of the American Red Cross reflects both the younger nature of some of our volunteers um, and that we're still doing great work. So now I'm the chair of the National Youth Council um, and with that we represent over 100,000 youth volunteers um, across this country who are youth volunteers and making sure that our senior leadership at national headquarters know that we are a force to be reckoned with and that we need to be part of this great organization. I recently just graduated. And it's a point, thank you, um, it's a point of confusion. It's a point of excitement and it's a point of reflection. For me, that reflection comes from knowing that I'm going to do something great. I'm excited to share that my next steps include being a teacher. I plan on returning to UCI and getting my master's in education and becoming an educator in Orange County and making sure that young people can grow and they can find the beauty in small things and they can find those opportunities of growth within themselves that I was able to find in elementary school, in middle school, in high school, in college. So um, my two degrees were political science and sociology. Some of those amazing adults who influenced those um, degrees for me, Sean Decker, Diane Chang, Shanta Muzumdar. Those are the people who, again, shared a piece of their life with me and told me, this is the next step for you. Here's how we pass it on. And so my challenge to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody <laughs> far in between, is this photo. This photo is me just a few years ago. Um, living my best life, I like to think and also representing my life motto. My life motto is spread your sparkle. And spread your sparkle to me means be who you are, be who you want to be, and help others be the person they want to be. Spread your sparkle means to me um, defining who you are, helping others find who they are, and spreading what makes them them. So with that, spread your sparkle, and have a great evening.